what we do here is go back, 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 back. back. I am in Palm Beach, Florida, ballpark of the Palm Beaches, here with my mom for, I think it's our sixth annual spring training trip. So we're here to watch three Cardinal games. This week, we have a special guest, Kyle McClellan, former Cardinal World Series champion and pitcher who has started a charity in his retirement. Kyle has started a charity in his retirement. We're gonna to talk to him about what it means to, to run a charity and, and, and be a leader. So uh, let's get this week going, shall we? All right, well, I am very excited to have with me, born and raised St. Louis, and former Cardinal pitcher, World Series champion. Right. Don't You're, leave that part out. No, of course that. not currently a broadcaster for Camo X. But what I'm really here to talk to Kyle today about is his role in a non-for-profit that he's created since retirement, um, which is Brace for Impact 46. But before we dive into that, I've got to talk to you a little bit about baseball. Yep. So my first question is, what is the highlight of your career? Definitely be opening day. Uh, my, my first opening day, it's when I made my debut. So being a St. Louis kid and being able to make my major league debut in St. Louis with all my friends and family there in the stands, um, that to me was, I mean, winning the World Series obviously is, is up there. But uh, the, the one moment that I'll never forget is running on that field for the very first time as a, as a member of the St. Louis Cardinals. And uh, that's something that no, can never be taken away from me, nor I'll never forget. Well, that's a winner. Cardinals ended up winning uh, four to two. We saw two home runs. The starting players only play for the first few innings. And it's great to see some of the young talent that the Cardinals have and that they get the opportunity to, to play in these games. And I think the, the leadership lesson that I would take away is that giving your young talent an opportunity to play in a game situation, whatever that game situation may be, whatever industry you're in, is, is really important. So, all right, we got two more games. about this this not-for-profit that you started mm -hmm. and I'll include a link below if, if people are interested in learning more or potentially donating but you know what inspired you and and how did you create that and really what was the the origins of Brace for Impact 46? My wife and I always wanted to do something in terms of giving back understanding that being from St. Louis and playing in St. Louis we, we had a, a very large platform to to kind of speak from and and uh, we just couldn't find the right fit. We looked and looked and looked and looked probably three years and could not find the right thing for us to kind of get involved with. And uh, Adam Wainwright, great friend of mine, and he said, why don't you come with us and, and go on a trip to Haiti? And uh, we're going in three weeks. And him and his wife had, had got involved in this orphanage and we went down there and man, just fell in love with the people and uh, saw the infrastructure that was in place down there and saw the need and really knew this was an area we could move in we can make a huge difference and a huge impact right away. And, and so that was, uh, that's what got us started. And I don't think it's by mistake. We, we now have learned so many things through the work we've done down there. Now we do have a local component here in St. Louis that uh, we're able to apply the things that we've learned. I, we would have messed up, long story short, we would have messed up if we would have came into St. Louis and said, this is what you're doing, we're funding this, this is how it needs to be done, versus really understanding the value of local leadership and trusting them and allowing them to tell us their needs because the areas we're working uh, we don't really have a great understanding of sure. what their needs are. We can tell them what we think their needs are, but we're not actually living in it and, and from the community that we're serving. So how did you identify those leaders? So I, I love the approach yeah. that you know you do not, you do not have expertise on, on Haiti, Correct. right? And leadership's everything, especially when you're dealing with uh, funds and donors. I have to justify to my donors uh, where their money's going and that it's accounted for. The, the side of Haiti, it's a really cool story of six kids that grew up in an orphanage together and our partner down there has been going down there for 25 years. His first trip, these six kids pulled them aside and said, Pastor Brad, uh, we think that uh, you're here to help with our vision. We, we have this vision to do what people have done for us. And as that relationship continued to grow over the years, that was in the late 80s, early 90s. This orphanage was finally built in 2010. So imagine having holding that vision for that long. 
Uh, but those six orphans that had that idea, that grew up together, sit on the board of what is now the I2D board. They call the shots, they all work together. This is their vision, and so we're just supporting their vision. And it's so important to have that local leadership in terms of uh, trust from the community. Mm -hmm. If we come in, there's, there's instantly a distrust, right? They don't know us, they don't know if we have the right intentions. With these people, they're there every day. This thing runs 365 days a year. They're there in the community. They're one of the people from the community that's being served, which makes a huge difference. Transition that back to St. Louis, we knew we wanted to take that same model and find that that partner here. And we were very quiet in, in finding it. And uh, once we got connected, man, we just knew. I mean, it was the same vision, the same passion, the same energy about the project that we've already done in Haiti. And they this person had that vision for here in St. Louis. And so uh, we just knew it was the right fit. And, and it's we also got connected by good people that we already trust, which I think is a, a big part of that. Absolutely. But, uh, if you don't have that quality leadership at the top of it, uh, there's no way it's going to work from from an implementer Im implementator standpoint. Sure, we're the funders, they're the implementators, right. and you got to have quality people doing both sides. All right, so we're back for game two. Roger Dean Stadium, where I did Fantasy King. I think this is us. All right, so we finished game two, and the Cardinals lost one to nothing. In fact, they had three hits, I think they had four base runners, and they grounded into three double plays. That's actually quite hard to do. The lesson that I take from this game is, if you don't score, you can't win. We just hired a program manager, okay. which you want to talk about a cool story. Uh, this kid grew up in Haiti, in an orphanage, and was adopted 10 years ago by a family in St. Louis. And in, in that process of adoption, it took four years for that process to happen. In that four years, he didn't go to school because the orphanage he was in that did the adoption didn't have a school. And so he came to St. Louis, jumped right into high school, not speaking English, not being in school in four years, and graduated on time, and then went to St. Charles Community College, played soccer, and then went, graduated from Lindenwood last May with a degree in nonprofit administration. Fantastic yeah. story. So he reached out and said, he actually came to one of our events, reached out, told us kind of where he's at. And uh, we brought him in for a year as just an hourly uh, guy, kind of doing some, taking some work off of me. And we just hired him in January as our program manager. So he'll oversee our work in St. Louis and also Haiti. And you talk about a unique perspective that he brings. I mean, he lived it. He lived the, sure. the, the, the life that we're trying to pour into in these kids and uh, just brings a really unique perspective. And all right, walking across the street from our hotel, there's mom. Say hi, mom. Hi. Um, I have my hat. She's got her, her Kentucky Derby hat. We, somebody forgot to tell her that it's not the Derby, it's spring training, but it's effective. So there's our hotel, and there's the stadium. Pretty convenient. Have a great day. Thank you. lessons and that you have from your baseball career do you apply now in business and as part of this non-for-profit it's just hard work and determination so if anything i take on i feel like i'm gonna succeed at and and it's because i i will essentially be consumed by it until i succeed at it and it's surrounding yourself with good people having good teammates in baseball makes everything work right it makes you a good team same thing in, in business and and uh I, I will, I'm determined to be successful. I'm determined to do things uh, and, and surround myself with the right people. And, and I think with that, if you have good people around you and you have the work ethic to get it done, um, you know, you can go out and do it. What advice would you give to your younger self? Uh, I, I would say never burn a bridge, you know, because you look, look back now at growing up in St. Louis, having the opportunity to be, for the, be with the Cardinals for 11 years, leaving the organization to go to Texas for a year, 
And then to be able to come back and be welcomed back into the Cardinal family and have job opportunities and things, there's so many people that I came across 15, 18, 20 years ago as a kid in high school that I'm still dealing with today. And, and I think that is uh, so important that, you know, some of these, when you're, you're coming up and you're a long time ago and you're a kid and you think, well, I'm never going to deal with that person again. Now all of a sudden they're influential in, in the stuff that I'm doing and being able to be at KMOX and, and do things here and uh, keep my foot in the door there. And, and uh, so I think, you know, taking advantage of, of opportunities that are in front of you in terms of networking and, and things like that and, uh, and, and never burning a bridge because you never know where you're going to run back into somebody and, and how that somebody could help you, whether on the, on the foundation side or on, on the baseball side. I think you've covered about half of my vlogs as far as the various <laughs> topics that I've covered. So we talk about networking, yep. professional relationships are critical and will last your entire career. Yep. Well, Kyle McClellan, thank you very much for joining Absolutely. the Doug McConey vlog. If you're interested in learning about more from Brace for Impact, check out the, the links below and uh, think about donating. Thanks again. Yeah, thank you.